What is the first country you visit in Epcot's World Showcase? Well, most people would probably answer either Mexico or Canada, but the actual answer according to Disney history might just surprise you. You see, Epcot as we know it was going to be two different parks. The first one was going to be called Epcot Future World Theme Center. It would have had a main street of the future, so to speak, in a communications corridor, and according to Disney records, the visitor will be exposed to a series of entertaining and instructive information experiences and communication techniques. The areas planned for this park included energy, transportation, food production, finance, education, information, healthcare, and oceanography. The other park was the World Showcase, which would have been located south of Magic Kingdom across the Seven Seas Lagoon next to the Transportation and Ticket Center. The plan for it was going to be similar to a permanent World's Fair. And in 1974, Card Walker said that in World Showcase, the nations of the world may participate on a permanent basis to demonstrate their culture and products. The name and idea of World Showcase was essentially a play off of Walt's statement of his original plans for Epcot in 1966, where he said it would be a showcase to the world. But in 1976, Imagineers had to scale back this project because of the energy crisis and a lack of financial resources and sponsors. To try to keep the project from being shelved, Marty Sklar and John Hench pushed the models of Epcot Future World and World Showcase together, and what resulted was Epcot Center as we know it today. Well, kinda sorta. You see, John Hench wanted the two parks to remain separate and have a monorail station in the middle of the two for easy accessibility to both parks. And the original plan after the two models were joined was to have you enter through the World Showcase. The different countries of the world would then serve as a sort of international Main Street USA. In 1977, the Imagineers flipped the positions of Future World and World Showcase, and the park began to resemble what we know it as today. Some of the locations of pavilions moved around in Epcot Center in Future World, like the Land Pavilion, which relocated to the other side of the park. The Land Pavilion in turn displaced the Life and Health Pavilion. And by the way, does anybody else really miss the Listen to the Land Thieves song? The other pavilion that moved was the Space Pavilion, which eventually became Horizons, and it was moved to the place where the land was originally supposed to be. But that wasn't the only part of the park that had some drastic rearranging. Over in the World Showcase, only a handful of the 30 planned countries would actually be constructed, largely due to lack of sponsorship by countries or corporations, not for lack of trying. There were 18 different countries we almost got in the World Showcase, and we don't have time to get into them all now, but there were some pretty elaborate plans and models made up for Russia and Switzerland and Australia, among others. But of all these countries that may or may not have made it into the World Showcase, there was one country that was always planned, and that was America. Yet it didn't quite look like what we have today. It started as a large round building meant to house the Grand American Adventure Show, considered one of the highlights of Epcot. This building was meant to be the connection point between Future World and World Showcase. The idea would be that you are already in America, so you start there before making your way around the world, starting with its neighboring countries, Mexico to the left and Canada to the right. This is also, by the way, why this pavilion is called the American Adventure versus simply America. But that big white circular building for the American Adventure is not in Epcot today. So why did this pavilion move? Well, it wasn't a creative decision. It was an operational one. Dick Nunes, known at Imagineering as Hopalong Capacity, among other things, took a look at the plan and balked. He saw what the creative minds didn't, a bottleneck of people all moving from Future World and then cramming into the American Adventure Theater, wanting to see the spectacular new show first before moving around the world. He suggested they move the entire pavilion across the water, creating what Walt Disney would call a weenie, a term used when he would lure his dogs places by dangling hot dogs in front of them. The Disney parks are littered with weenies, or visual hooks to pull you towards places. Just think of seeing the carousel spinning through the Arch of Sleeping Beauty Castle, or the Tree of Life beckoning you forward in Animal Kingdom. Anyway, Dick Nunes argued that by putting the American Adventure across the water, people would have the chance to wander the countries and take some photos, lingering along the way and dispersing the crowds so that the theater didn't get overrun, and they could effectively manage capacity. Of course, this meant that they needed to redesign the pavilion itself, not only to make it more visually intriguing from across the water, but also to make it fit in with the impeccably designed countries that surrounded it. It was no longer a gate from Future World, it was a country itself, a destination you look forward to journeying toward. 
And so, knowing all of this, I feel like we can finally put to rest the age-old question of which country do you start in when it comes to the World Showcase? Because despite our personal preferences of which direction we walk around the world, the true answer is, and always has been, clear. We all start and end in America.